Hi, everyone. It's Judy Warner. Welcome back to the On Track Podcast. Well, it's another week and I got another great guest and I can't wait to share him with you. Today, we have Scott McMorrow, who's the CTO of Signal Integrity at Sam Tech. We're going to talk about a webinar series that they've been producing since about April of this year to help keep engineers and designers like you educated and on the forefront of the fast moving technology. Also, Altium is celebrating, are you are you ready for it? 35 years. Really? And 35. Um, we're wow. uh, 35, can you believe it, Scott? And so um, we are about to release Altium Designer 21. It's in the last phase of beta here. So I wanted to remind you to keep your eyes and ears open and that's coming to you soon, just in time for the holidays. So <laughs> lean in, enjoy this podcast with Scott McMorrow. Welcome to Altium's On Track Podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social Social media. Well, hi, Scott. Great to be with you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Judy. It's good to be with you also. Well, I feel like I'm meeting a little, uh, you know, niche, but uh, powerful force in the industry. I've been seeing so much about Geek Speak, you know, on LinkedIn and also been on the SI list and hearing so much about Geek Speak. So I figured it was time to serve you up to the all team audience and um, if they don't know about you to start tapping in. So um, your title, CTO of Signal Integrity, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to land at Samtech. Ah, well, I have been a Signal Integrity consultant for, well, gosh, about 30 years now, going back into the 90s. Um, and, um, oh, about 20 years ago, I formed my own company called Terrace, many people might know, Terrace Speed Consulting Group. We did high performance signal integrity consulting for the industry, uh, system houses, silicon houses, and even for, uh, for EDA companies to correlate their tools. And um, uh, six years ago, Brian Visich, president uh, or vice president of Samtech's uh, engineering department, came to me and said, "What would you think about bringing signal integrity in uh, sig signal integrity consulting into Samtech?" Um, and so six uh, six and a half years ago, I sold my company to Samtech mm -hmm. and um, came into uh, not form a signal integrity department, it already existed, but to help uh, enhance and direct it in the future towards more uh, system applications and uh, setting us up so that we could have an audience with system architects. This is a theme I'm hearing a lot on the podcast lately is um, this encouragement to really have electrical engineers be more systems oriented, right? Because there's so much they touch, you know, not just, um, you know, circuit design or layout or signal integrity, you know, they're really juggling a lot of pieces. So, you know, kudos to you guys for having the wisdom to do that. Well, give us a brief overview of Samtech. I think most people will know that you're uh, Samtech's a connector manufacturer and also cables, but tell us a little bit about Samtech. So um, Samtech is a privately owned uh, company. Um, we, I forget how many employees we have, so I won't even talk towards that. I'll, I'll make somebody mad. Uh, but uh, we manufacture board-to-board um, -board connectors, uh, backplane connectors, cable connectors, power connectors. Um, we also um, manufacture optical uh, assemblies and engines and components in our Firefly line. Um, and uh, we integrate our cable in with our connectors with our flyover technology. And that's really um, what I was bro brought in to, um, to help facilitate and evangelize in the industry was the idea of switching from printed circuit board uh, transport of signals to transporting them over cables over longer distances or higher speed. And so uh, it's very much a system problem in that we have to 
accommodate um, the entire system, the airflow, the thermal flow, um, the power distribution, <clears throat> the high performance signal integrity, and then of course it has to be me mechanically robust. And so um, from the time that I started, uh, our signal integrity group had 25 people when I uh, came to SAMTEC. We are now up to 70 people in our signal integrity department. And that's- My experts. goodness. Experts in CERTES, high performance signal integrity, system design, chassis design, uh, backplane design. Um, we have a, an entire layout department in our group and um, high performance electromagnetic modeling. And then everything that we do is integrated, um, vertically integrated in the company. So we, uh, we manufacture our own cables. Uh, we assemble uh, and uh, all of our components and cable assemblies ourselves. And we integrate all of our testing into that too. Where's all this, this manufacturing of your cables and connectors done, Scott? Uh, all over the world. We have a worldwide footprint. We have a uh, main factory is in New Albany, Indiana, just right across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we, have, we have facilities uh, in Indiana for manufacturing. Our, um, some of our um, optical manufacturing is done in California. Others is done in are done in New Albany, Indiana. We have a facility uh, uh, developing uh, glass interposer products and glass um, uh, substrate products in Colorado Springs. And then we have manufacturing in Taiwan, in China, in Singapore, Costa Rica, and I'm sure I'm yeah. uh, Vietnam. So we're, we're a worldwide footprint company like everybody has to be. Yeah, I don't think until I did a little bit of research, I realized how really large that footprint was and how large the company is. So, um, well, what I wanted to talk to you specifically about is something innovative, Scott, that you've, you know, been at the heartbeat of what you've been doing since this um, pandemic started. So around April, I started seeing uh, these these on-demand webinars, both live and on-demand, right, mm -hmm. Scott? Those That's are both correct. live and okay. Called Geek Speak, with a lowercase but giant EEs in the middle. Right and, here. Uh, yep, there it is. So um, I've been seeing them sort of all over the place, and and um, I I wanted to share, I wanted to learn more about it and share it with our audience because I think it's an outstanding um, resource for. Um, Altium's customers. And so tell us a little bit about how Geek Speak got started and, and sort of what the thoughts were behind it. And then we'll talk more about what the content is. Well, absolutely. At the beginning of the coronavirus uh, outbreak, um, uh, several of us realized that this, we were going to be in for the long haul, that we were essentially going to be locked up in our homes for the next year, uh, probably a year and a half. Um, until after the vaccine, uh, knock on wood, knock on wood. Um, we, uh, and we were losing our trade shows. And so what happened is, is the last trade show we went to was design con in Santa Clara this year, uh, in, uh, January, February. And we realized, uh, and we had a beautiful booth, lots of good demos, uh, that showed our products and, um, were viscerally appealing um, and I wanted a way to be able to continue our outreach to engineers um, uh, uh, during during COVID. And one of the things that we used that we've done at our at conferences at, at DesignCon is we have a um, a get together like a lot of companies do at, at conferences and trade shows um, that we called um, uh, Meet and Geek. Uh, and we've had we've been holding that for going on about 15 or 16 years now, where we invite people up to our uh, hospitality uh, area and uh, ballroom, and they have dinner, uh, you know, they have uh, snacks and drinks, and we talk. And there's absolutely no sales talk whatsoever. It's just getting to know each other and meeting your fellow electrical engineers. And we thought, and I thought, well. What if we applied that to webinars? What if we, um, we have people that have expertise in all of the uh, engineering disciplines? Uh, why don't we create some presentations that we can give once a week, once every couple of weeks to engineers uh, as a live webinar and then um, to uh, 
and then uh, record for, uh, for, for further download. And so that's how it started. And the idea was provide one hour of technically good content with no commercial content. So the idea was to teach, not to, um, not to sell. Selling comes later. Um, it, this was all about creating relationships and um, you know, pro providing a few, um, an hour out of your day uh, in the midst of COVID where at least you're not bored for, uh, for, for 60 minutes. I love that. That sounds like my job. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love the concept of giving non-commercial content and also building relationships. And like you said, Scott, like that stuff happened sort of organically at trade shows, right? With these get togethers or happy hours or over a meal. And we really lost something important there that was sort of this you know, learning that happens in this sort of organic relational way. And so I love that. And, you know, we try to do the same thing here and we had the same problem with, with all team live, you know, doing it virtually. And so I really admired what you guys were doing and I recognized it. And so um, what kind of content are you putting on there? So um, the, the concept was to mix it up with a lot of different kinds of presentations. Some are more theoretical, some are more practical. Uh, but they're always designed to be something that you can learn in about 60, 60 minutes. And so uh, since a lot of people are laying out boards with PCI Express, we have, um, we've had a several uh, webinars on GeekSpeak webinars on uh, PCI Express web uh, methodology and what's next. Uh, we have a presentation that I gave on corner bends. What's the best way to radius a bend, go around a corner, and what are the problems that, that can happen if you do that? Um, crosstalk, uh, trace design for crosstalk control, a very simple subject. And what we started learning was, um, you know, 20 years ago in the infancy of the signal integrity field, mm -hmm. uh, everybody learned a lot of very, very basic stuff. Today, um, and we had to do it um, with really poor tools. Uh, they were really, they were very slow. And so you had to learn the fundamentals of transmission line theory and all of those things really well. And what we found is a lot of engineers have lost some of those early skills that all of us old timers, we know. You know, yes. we, know we know the rules of thumb, but we also know how to bend the rules of thumb mm -hmm. and what the overall meaning is. And so what we try to teach in uh, these classes, um, um, you know, how do you use, uh, how do you design these high performance systems? And for us, high performance would be PCI Express generation four and faster. Uh, so 16 gigabits per second or faster, essentially, um, which is, you know, and the industry is going to uh, 112 now. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the general engineer isn't left behind, even layout engineers, because it's go always good to know why you're being asked to do a certain thing, because it, uh, it changes the way in which you approach doing a problem. Well, and I think it also helps you put those practices in place across your designs, right? If you know why you're doing what you're doing, you can apply it. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And what we try to do, being a, a, a group of signal integrity and system engineers, what we try to do is, in GeekSpeak, span from one, um, one field into another across multiple presentations. And in the end, uh, what I try to do, I'm, al I'm almost always the, um, um, the host or one of the hosts, and I'm always giving color con commentary along the way. Mm -hmm. And I, what I try to do is make those connections between this presentation mm -hmm. and the previous ones we had. So they're build, they're, they're build on presentations. Mm -hmm. um, we finished Geek Speak for the year, um, but all of those uh, presentations and slides are available online. So will you continue those after the new year then, Scott? Yes, we're now in planning for next year's first uh, presentations. We're going to change our cadence. Our cadence went from once a week to grab attention to once every two weeks. And we believe that next year, uh, this coming year, we're going to be on a once every three week 
cadence probably morphing into once a month so that we, we want to keep momentum going because from a, um, from an education perspective, but also from a, a sales and marketing perspective, it's been fantastic in terms of the outpouring of uh, goodwill and uh, that we get from engineers. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love that. Um, so once the, the new year starts, how can people go sign up for um, sign up for Geek Speak, you know, it, come in the new year, uh, where do they sign up for that? So um, you can go to uh, www.samtech.com slash Geek Speak, G-E-E-K-S-P-E-E-K. And that will get you to the website uh, landing page. You can also send emails, personal emails to geekspeak at samtech.com. And that okay. will reach the team. Okay, wonderful. And then those can, I will also share the link. I went and found the link. My goodness, there's a lot of content there. I was, I mean, I know you've been doing this for a while, but my goodness, there's a lot of good content there. And I will share the link in the show notes below. Okay. And I will Thank also you. share that email um, so folks can sign up if they'd like to to go to the live ones. But, you know, you could, for our audience, you can go pick up a there's more hours of good content there than you probably have time to time to watch, but it's really, really rich. And I, I really appreciate that systems down, you know, across the disciplines uh, approach. Cause I think that's really helpful to give context, right. To the whole. Well, it is. And I'll say that, um, you know, we have 70 engineers in our, in our group um, and, everyone is at every person is at different levels of skill in different areas. And so we use the geek speak presentations for uh, our continuing education internally. Hmm. So uh, when somebody comes across a problem that's been talked about in geek speak, I'll often tell them, Hey, go and take a look at the geek speak presentation that so-and-so did and, you know, look at the slides and look at the video. And I think that'll help you, you know, get a better handle on what you're doing. So um, that's pretty I just, interesting. I like that where you're sort of using it as an internal tool as well. Yes, because when you have more than a small group of people, it's hard to make sure that they all are on the same page. It's, you know, it's like herding uh, cats or squirrels. You yeah. <laughs> well, um, you mentioned that most of the time you're the host. Are there other people within Samtech uh, producing some of the geek speak webinars as well yes I, I i'm the host but i'm generally not the presenter i think i've presented two geek speaks so far um i wanted to spread the love okay <laughs> and the pain of creating presentations <laughs> um so yeah there's quite a few pre uh, presenters um a few off the top of my head ishvan novak who many people in the industry know who is an expert in power integrity has given a number of presentations on uh, power integrity and capacitors and things. Uh, uh, Gus, uh, Gustavo Blondo has given presentations on a number of uh, different, different things. Um, Rich Mellitz is uh, the expert in the IEEE and at Samtech on IEEE COM uh, simulations for channels and uh, effective return loss simulations for channels. He's given a, a bunch of very um, technical and erudite uh, presentations um, where I've followed up and my next presentation is, well, okay, you've learned how to do the mechanical black box stuff. Now, here's how you use it in practice. Yes. Um, so many different people, Travis Ellis in our uh, Wilsonville uh, facility gave um, very good presentations on um, crosstalk problems with uh, certain connector systems and certain kinds of interfaces. So the idea is to look at things that we've had problems with and have solved and then allow, uh, basically provide that training for everybody else. We, we believe in floating boats up. Um, I love that. I love not, that. And, sharing and the love. <laughs> sharing our, our capabilities. And these are things that we wanted to give. We wanted to have white papers and it just became a compelling event for us to um, convince our engineers to actually make up, uh, create some presentations. Well, many times in this on this podcast, my listeners, there are listeners here would have uh, noted that I keep saying there's silver linings here. This has been a terrible time 
really in history on a, in the world uh, stage. But I feel like things like Geek Speak and sort of us innovating our way out of some of these challenges has been a real silver lining. And I definitely see Geek Speak as one of those bright lights. Thank um, you. Thank you. Uh, now, you and I have some smart friends in common. Oh, by the way, for our listeners, Isvan Novak has been on this podcast before, and I'll share that link with you as well. Brilliant, brilliant guy. And he um, and he was also a speaker. He was on a panel at All Team Live and uh, really honored to know him. And uh, so part of the way that I know about you is I subscribe to this funny little bulletin board thing called SI list. So um, I'm going to share the link to that so people can sign up, but there is just powerhouse names in there. People like Isvan Novak, Eric Bogatin, you, Lee Ritchie, like how did this thing happen? Oh my gosh. Back in the, uh, I wasn't there right at the beginning of, of the SI list, but mm -hmm. I was pretty close to the beginning back in the nineties. Uh, there were a very few people that had um, were performing what we now call signal integrity and power integrity engineering. Um, and they thought that it would be a really good idea to have a computer bulletin board to share that, uh, to you know, share and talk ideas through. And so um, it was Ray Anderson at Sun Microsystems at the time who set up a little, um, you know, Sun Unix server um, that was, you know, old school bulletin board kind of um, um, list, list server. Um, and we've kept, they've kept that, uh, that format uh, throughout the entire time. Um, you know, and the, the idea is that it's a, a place for signal integrity engineers to share information and ideas and ask questions. Yeah, and there's nothing commercial. The only commercial people that ever are on there is if you have presentations that are, you know, re that are um, uh, of interest in the entire community, then you can publish them there. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, um, um, if you're looking for a job, if you're a person looking for a job, not a headhunter, and uh, you know, we don't share product information and things like that. So it really is a very egalitarian sort of, um, uh, old school internet sort of thing. I mean, it, you could do a, a SI list on a, uh, on a teletype if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm sure that people did back in the day. Yeah, well, it is very old school. But like I said, the powerhouse wisdom in that channel. And that's one of the ways I found out about Geek Speak. So um, for our audience, I will share the, the where you can go sign up for that. Because, you know, if you have a question about something, you just throw it out to the group and you there might will be get somebody that, that knows something about it. And the, the beauty is that there's so many engineers that do things that they, because of intellectual property issues, they can't share. Right. But there are other engineers doing exactly the th same thing and they may be able to share the same information. And so right. it's um, there's a collective goodness that happens. And so many of us have become just incredible friends and, um, you know, over the years. So yeah. Eric and, and Ishvan and Lee Ritchie and, um, you know, the whole crew are, uh, you know, known them for 25, 30 years now. That's wonderful. Well, I'm honored to count some of those guys, my friend, I don't have 25 years with them, but they're, they're dear. And I really appreciate some of the educational content they've served up here on our platform as well. It's really, really valuable to the industry. Well, and so is geek speak. So, um, all right, I'm going to ask you one of my my questions. I haven't done this in a while, but I think I want to ask you. Okay. Um, when did you know you were going to be an engineer? Oh, gosh. It's about five years old, and I was in my mind. Uh, my father was a World War II P-38 pilot, and so there were airplanes all over, you know, model airplanes all over my house. Mm. And he was in the FAA working in research and development on instrument landing systems. And so there was electronics all over the house. There were always projects. And so, um, and then we always worked on cars all the time. And so, mm. um, yeah, about five or six years old, I was in my mind uh, inventing um, um, 
turbine engines. Of course, they'd already been invented, but as a child, <laughs> you don't know that. It was like, oh, when I finally saw it, it's like, I had that idea. Um, and, and that was when I just have always been a, a, an inventor and a teacher and, uh, um, a, and interested in that. Actually, I haven't always been a teacher. I used to stutter. So um, oh, it took a long time for me to get to the point where I could uh, talk in public. And now look at you. Yeah, there's no accounting for. <laughs> <laughs> for well, and something I appreciate your, about you teaching is uh, you had mentioned when we were preparing for this podcast that not all engineers are great presenters, that those two skill sets don't necessarily come together. But when they do, it's so powerful. Um, and you seem to be one of those unicorns. Yes. Um, engineers are not very good public speakers normally. Um, they're also not very good socially, which is where geek speak comes in. For my people, um, this uh, allows them an e easy avenue to do public speaking without being in public. So presenting to slides is fairly, you know, fairly easy to do. Right. It's uh, it's non uh, it's non threatening. And so right. it allows them to give these presentations and get this in, incredible feedback um, from their peers in the industry um, without having to stand in front of an audience of 100 or uh, 200 or 300 people. Uh, that can be daunting. I know that from my own experience. When Absolutely. I first did it. The first time I stood on stage to give a presentation the entire room began to spin. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I started getting dizzy and started dissociating and everything started shaking. Um, it takes a lot to get over that, 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 that stage front. Um, well, we're so glad you did Scott. And we are so glad that, you know, thank you so much to you and Sam tech for what you've done. I think it's been a real gift to the industry. And again, I'll make sure to share all these links here, but thanks for joining me today. And, teaching us all about geek speak and hopefully we'll have you back and talk about some other subjects that you're geeking out about. Yeah. Well, thank you, Judy. Appreciate it. And we appreciate uh, Altium, um, you know, giving us a forum here to talk about geek speak. And certainly this will be the beginning of other wonderful things that we'll do together because uh, the Altium tool is used all over the industry. It's probably one of the largest footprints in the industry. And uh, it's, it's good to see how it's grown since a, um, in the early days, it was kind of a toy, right? It really it was, was. It yeah. really was. It was just, uh, I, I don't know who developed it. I'm not a, aware of the history, but it was, it was kind of just considered one of those toy layout tools that you'd get because it was really cheap. And, and now it's become a really uh, high quality production tool. And that's uh, uh, a great benefit uh, to the entire industry. Thank you. Well, it's fun to be here right now. And it's fun to be here as we look back from 35 years and look back yeah. when basically uh, you'll appreciate this. It basically started in a university in Tasmania, Australia, where <laughs> a, a, a PhD and his research assistant decided, you know, they couldn't afford, afford Sun Microsystems workstations or any right. of the other tools out there. And they so they wanted to, to be able to simulate circuits, right? And so they just, the PCs, the, you know, personal computers were new and they were just scrappy and they thought they should have some tools because they're in the university. And so they made, whacked this little thing together and someone said, hey, that's really something. And yeah, that's uh, fantastic. Um, that's, that was, that's where it was 35 years ago. And now look at us. So and there were so many companies that did the same thing and they aren't here today. So it's, uh, yeah. it's a testament to, uh, to the ability to bring a product to market and, and advance it. Well, again, thank you so much. And um, we will definitely have you back and, and uh, look forward to doing much more with you and Sam Tech. To our listeners, thanks so much for joining us today. Hope you will go over and check out Geek Speak and dig into these amazing resources that Sam Tech, yep, there it is on his, his pocket, Geek Speak. And, um, you know, go over and check it out. I think you'll be really glad to know about the resource. We look forward to being with you next time here at the On Track Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember to stay healthy, stay safe, and always remember to stay on track. <laughs>